The Mitsubishi ASX is the compact crossover that you probably left off your shortlist. Does this improved version deserve your attention? It certainly smartened up its act. A contender that's just that bit more capable than your average little urban SUV. In an age where increasingly small SUVs ride and handle just like the compact hatches that they're based on, this ASX is cut from a rather different kind of cloth. But then you might expect that from a brief look at the basic recipe here. It's a small crossover with a big two litre petrol engine lacking any sort of turbocharger. Uh, it's a power plant that's marshalled in most models by a manual gearbox featuring only five speeds. Uh, there's also proper ground clearance and the option of a decent four-wheel drive system if you want it. Now this is how SUVs used to be and how they were when this car hit the market in its very first form back in 2010. That two litre petrol engine is the only one on offer and it puts out 150 horsepower. It replaces the previous 1.6 litre unit and that could only muster 115 horsepower. That new output is obviously higher than rivals but uh, it's necessary given this power plant's lack of forced induction. This inevitably affects efficiency with the stats for the manual model seeing an unremarkable WLTP combined cycle fuel figure of 37.7 mpg and an NEDC rated CO2 reading of 161 grams per kilometer. Buyers choose between a front driven manual model or the top version that we're trying here which gives you an Invex 3 CVT auto gearbox and Mitsubishi's proven four wheel drive system. Uh, for the times when you don't want your ASX to be front driven that 4x4 setup offers four wheel drive auto and four wheel drive lock settings and there's a higher than usual ride height for a car of this class too set at 190 millimeters. That doesn't make this car into any kind of off-roader of course but we think to be more capable on light tracks than most of its rivals and it'd be a better tow car too for something like a small caravan thanks to the four-wheel drive option and the 1.3 ton brake towing capacity but few ASX's will have to work for their living in such a fashion and even fewer will ever be seen on anything other than a paved surface so if you were minded to consider this Mitsubishi uh, you will really have to decide whether its tarmac drive dynamics would suit your preferences now it's certainly it doesn't much like being thrown about but the ride quality at speed is fine and there are some things about it that you might really like the lovely Evo rally style gear shift paddles on this auto model for example and the standard rear view camera which makes parking so much easier Facelift budgets rarely allow for any fundamental changes in cabin architecture, and this one's no exception. As for the updates made here, well, most of those are detailed ones. There are new seat fabrics, or in the case of this top Exceed model, smarter leather upholstery. Uh, the air conditioning controls have been redesigned, and they now feature piano black and silver accents. More piano black trimming now features on the central instrument panel, and there's a smarter black headliner too. And perhaps most significantly, the center dash SDA infotainment screen has increased in size from 7 to 8 inches, and it now includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Uh, the recessed gauges that you view through this redesigned four-spoke leather stitch steering wheel, uh, they are very much of the conventional kind, and they're separated by a small display with fuel and temperature readouts. In summary then, what we've got here is a modern take on old school values. One day soon, Mitsubishi will find itself beyond the need to offer such a thing. But what it does, we can see a small but loyal market for this car, just as it is. <laughs>